this is not a build video. This is uh, answering a question that came up by a subscriber named Joe Tato about how I do the drawings in the beginning when I was still doing them. I don't do them anymore because of time concerns. I wanted my videos to be a little bit shorter, but I'm looking at putting those back in. So let me know if you did like those because I will start doing that. This isn't a short topic. So I'm gonna do my best to keep it as succinct as possible. When I do this, I'm gonna show you the things that are kind of the rules to make things correct, but I do tweak the rules to fit into the world that is this piece of paper. The biggest thing I'm gonna tell you right now, Joe Tato, I don't know if you can draw, I don't know if you feel like you can't, you can. Every single person who can hold a pencil can draw. Um, you just need to learn the basic rules of what you should do and then you start tweaking that to be what you want. Um, and that's how you find your style. So don't look at it as you can't draw, just look at it as you have a different level of artistic freedom. Look at it as a Bob Ross situation where it's not a mistake, it's a happy accident. So go with that and just enjoy it. Practice a lot and you'll start pushing things and you'll find what you like doing. Um, but let's get you up here. Joe Tato was asking about why all the triangles are in there. I'm going to try to explain that real quick. Um, when you do a search on Google for two-point perspective, what I usually draw in, you're going to see this, which is a horizon line, a vanishing point, a vanishing point. Dead center is an object edge that's closest to you, and you draw lines out to them from the points to the vanishing point. Um, I can look at that and I can say that's a one by one and that's a one by one and say that's a cube. It looks like a cube, close enough. But if you take that edge and you put it off to the side, sure this looks like a one by one and a one by one, so a one by one by one cube, but there's no way with what's here to know that that is actually a one by one cube. You can guess and after you practice a lot, you'll get things that are fairly accurate, but you don't really know. I will tell you right now that if you are looking for layout concerns, like you want to know how artists were doing what they're doing, um, how things are laid out in most famous pieces of artwork, this is the guy to look up. Look up his channel. He used to have a TV show called Landscapes Through Time, but an amazing, amazing art teacher. If you're looking for reasoning behind all this drafting of this project or projects, and the math behind it, the geometry behind it, look up this guy because this channel is phenomenal. As you get further away to the vanishing points, things are going to look really skewed and odd. And that's what happens, just happens in a two-point perspective. Um, if you really want to get into it and make sure things look real as they're going away, you need to get into a three-point perspective which has a whole lot more lines in it and measuring points which, which technically are those three this is a vanishing point vanishing point vanishing point i don't do this because it's not necessary to visualize what i'm doing with my projects um and i want to point out that also these aren't incorrect it's just the only reason i do all those extra lines is to make sure that this is a one by one and one by one but doing what the people teach you on those tutorials is usually pretty dead on. And after you get used to it, this doesn't use measuring points on it. I just drew that out. Um, this one I did use measuring points. So what we're gonna try to do is try to create this world in real life so that you can see where measurements are coming from as we draw them out. I am starting with something that is called a horizon line. I didn't want to draw all this out and show it to you, but this is a horizon line, which is how high your eye is off the ground, which this is the ground line. And down here is a little tick, and that is you. That is technically your eye. Um, this edge here is the closest edge of the object that's closest to you. What we have here is this drawn in a top-down view. Block, 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 block. Five blocks. One, two, three, four, five. Five blocks. I actually have five blocks. These are all one by one by one by one by one. So I'm going to put a block in each one of these squares. Pretend they're all actual cubes. So now we have one by one by one cubes and all this layout. This is the world that we're going to draw. That is this. Okay. 
So let's get it to that angle and there you go. All right, this line right here that I drew on this, that is the actual plane of this paper. That is the sheet. Imagine this is a sheet of glass that you're looking through. That is where this plane is. And this line coming straight out at you is this line right here. And it's coming straight off the edge of this front block. So right there, out. If that lined up a little bit better. So we're gonna pull that aside. Could use a triangle, you could use rollers, uh, protractor, <clears throat> compasses. I just technically rip off a piece of paper and I use it for my drawings. What I want to make sure is that me, the U mark, is on the page and that when I connect it, I can move this around and get my vanishing points up on the horizon line. So this is where I should be. But because I want my vanishing points to show up, I'm going to move it up. So technically, I'm now up here. This little bit will skew what you're looking at. But this is one of those rules that I break. I will also point out, whatever this distance is, you need to times it by like 1.73, and that would give you this distance. And that's where your 90 degree angle should happen from. We're going from here because I don't have enough room on my paper. But, but we're gonna draw from the horizon line down to here, a 90 degree angle, oops, which is what I happen to have on this piece of paper. What I'm also gonna do at this moment is where that vanishing point is crossing the horizon, which is a vanishing point, I'm gonna mark it on this piece of paper. There you go. So I now have this distance, which is this distance, this distance, which is right here. And I have a right triangle on here. What I'm going to do now is this is a VP. This is a VP vanishing point. This is my ground horizon. I'm going to take the VP that I marked out and put it measure that same distance out on the horizon line. So there's a VP, this is a measuring point that is for this VP. I need to do the same thing on the other side. The reason I'm doing this is because if you want to make things accurate, the only places in this world that you've created that measurements are actually accurate are on this vertical and on the ground plane. So I need to use these points to translate actual measurements from here into the object wherever it is in this world. We're going to mark this corner right here, right there. It is on the ground. It's right on that vertical. It's the closest edge to me, so it is this line. That is one unit. And I'm just going to measure this out. We're going to say it is one inch. That and that is this edge. What I need to do is draw out the plane that is this way and the plane that is this way. So I'm going to connect these dots with the vanishing points. I need to know what this is translated onto this line. Again, like I said, this is the only place that horizon uh, horizontal things can be measured from. So that's one inch. We will measure over one inch right here. So to get that translated onto this line, the bottom line, I'll use this measuring point and connect it with my measurement. And I will mark it on that bottom line. That, that distance and that distance are equal. So I'll translate that knowing that this is 90 degrees. Draw that on there. This is now a one by one square in this world that we created. Let's get it over on this side using the same technique, but it will be with the opposite measuring point.
I now have a one by one here and a one by one here in this world. I know that it's accurate to the measurement that's here. It is going to look a little bit skewed because of this distance, but that is this face and this face. So let's get this face on there as well. To do that, I find the points, the edges, and I draw those to their vanishing points. That is a one by one by one cube. That is this face, this face, and this face. Let's do the same thing to get these other two cubes out there as well as this cube. Note that this is a half unit and this is two and a half units. So we'll measure these out and then we will mark it out here and translate those with their corresponding measuring points out onto this bottom line. Face, 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 face. All of these are one by one cube in this world. Yes, they do look a little bit skewed, but that is because of this again. I'm going to connect all these to the opposite vanishing points. there see this line is straight to you this line is straight to you that's pretty much that translated into this world um, and it's accurate this is a one by one cube all of these are one by one by one cubes one cubed cubed one cubed cubes there you go this angle right here you can like if you play video games like I'm sure Minecraft has it uh, most 3D rendering programs have it, but you're able to change the angle of the camera. And what that's actually doing is changing the angle here. So you're squeezing things in and that will make things look distorted, but really exaggerates what's going on. And once you learn the basic rules, you start playing with that and start tweaking things how you like them. And that's how you end up with like crazy comic book drawings. I hope this helps answer some of your questions. So, but that's how I do things. All right, cool. Bye-bye.